A lot of people think they can literally walk in, hand over the silver to you, and you're just gonna give them the appropriate ratio of gold back. Is, is that how it works? Well, it does work that way. Okay. Except that's not how we do it. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching Yankee Stacking. So, you're interested in playing that gold to silver ratio with your silver? Well, you came to the right place because you're going to hear from Tim Marshner, my local coin shop dealer on the subject. But before I do, could I please have you hit that thumbs up for this video? It would really help the uh, video get recommended to others. I would really appreciate it. All right, Tim. I have a question for you, and this one is pretty popular in our stacking community. Got a lot of people that are buying silver, hoping to exchange it to gold. They play the, you know, gold to silver ratio, right? Yeah. And that ratio, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, and, and I kind of warn them uh, that there can be some issues with that. Um, you know, I thought about, uh, you know, the, the, the markup that may occur or what a dealer has to charge. If, you, if you're running a business mm -hmm. and you have to pay the bills by selling gold and silver, mm -hmm. um, you have to treat everything as a separate transaction. And the simple reason is everything I buy, I have to put into inventory at that price, okay? As if it's cash, everything has a cash price. That's what I put it in to the inventory as. I don't go into inventory and manipulate it because the price goes up so I don't reprice my inventory. Mm. It's always in at cost. So everything I buy, I put into inventory at cost. Everything I sell, I take out of inventory at the same cost that I put it into inventory. Um, so it's, it's always two transactions. If I bought it 10 years ago, it's still in inventory at that price. Okay. okay? And then everything I sell, I have to remove from inventory at that price. I wonder if the all dealers do it that way. Wouldn't they look at this exchange as a way you know, to make some I've extra? I've seen some coin dealers who estimate everything. I don't know how they ever do the taxes out because if they ever get audited, they have no information. They say, well, I'm not sure what it was, but that's what I think <laughs> it was. You know, I, yeah. everything I have is on paper. That's why I've got stacks of paper everywhere. Coincidentally, and it's only coincidental, it does work out close to whatever the ratio is. And with gold eagles and silver eagles, it's very easy and it's very close to the ratio oh, because we pay more for the silver eagles and we pay more for the gold eagles. So we charge more for the silver eagles and we charge more for the gold eagles. So that brought in silver Britannias and I wanted eagles, gold eagles. It wouldn't be as close to that ratio, right? No, it probably wouldn't be. But if, you know, we, we do pay more than spot for everything. It doesn't matter if it's gold or silver. Um, so it's not far off the ratio. Okay. I've always had the expectation that there'd be something lost in the exchange because I'm selling you my silver, one transaction, yeah. that I'm buying the gold, second transaction. There's no way, if you're going to stay in business, there's no way it's going to be a pure ratio on spot on paper spot right? coincidentally we've done that trend we you know, that exact transaction uh three times in the last week and one time it was um actually two times they were bringing in silver eagles not all 2021s they're all back dates um it, one time it worked out the the ratio was around 67 and the cost of the gold was 65 eagles so that's not far off the ratio so depending on condition and what type it could be very close to the ratio yes and it, you know if i'm okay. paying less for something for a reason whatever mm -hmm. the reason is mm -hmm. uh as an example if it's not eagles it's going to be art bars you know that we end up scrapping um it's nowhere near the ratio okay so when it comes to government minted silver bullion silver eagles gold eagles Am I going to lose something in that two, those two transactions? Well, uh, probably, because when I buy something, I'm buying it with an idea of you know, making a profit when I go to sell that item. 
and to the be prospects expected. are pretty slim, you know, since I, I know they're incredibly slim. I raised slim. the price today of 41 <laughs> because they cost me almost 40. Mm. And, but that's the last patch. You know, I, when, when I asked the wholesaler, I said, I'm going to come down and pick up 200 eagles. And so I get there and he, he says, well, I have your 100 eagles. And I said, well, I ordered 200. And he said, yeah, I have your 100 eagles. And I'm looking at the monster box, which is open, and there are five rolls in the monster box. And that's the last monster box mm. that I saw there. Uh, so I said, well, I guess I'll take the 100 eagles. So he puts them on the counter. So my first concern about potentially losing something in the transaction, playing the GSR, going from yeah. silver to gold, is uh, I think I'm right. It, de it depends on the market. It also depends on what the wholesale market looks like. I'm concerned, Tim, that when it comes time after a major collapse, reset, whatever you want to call it, um, to exchange my silver that I have for gold, it may be unattainable. Unobtainium, right? Yeah, that's, that's what gold is made of, unobtainium. That's my concern. People are going to flood in with a pile of silver saying, where's the gold? And it may not be there. Well, I, there are a couple of facts. And, you know, we all rely on the paper market to get our prices. Um, the paper market um, price for gold is out of the control of the big bigwigs down on Wall Street. Because uh, gold is, as we I've been saying for years, a barter currency between nations. And silver is a barter currency between individuals. Um, silver is pretty easy to control. And we saw that when it was an effort to force the price up over $30 an ounce. And what the COMEX did was just, you know, widen the spread. Um, yeah. Want to cash out of the paper market, mm -hmm. you get what they're going to give you. You're not getting any more than that. Uh, on the other hand, if um, gold drops below 1800 there are about five nations out there that start buying it. Some of those nations can't afford to buy it, but they buy it anyway. And I, you know, with that those, you know, the five big nations that we know about. I mean, it's, you know, if, if so, if gold drops below a certain point, there are probably twenty-five or thirty nations that start buying it. Um, that means it's out of the control of the paper market. So my fear might be warranted in a worst case scenario where if somebody is playing or trying to play that GSR and waits too long and brings in their silver, there may not be gold to get. That's true. That's always true. Mm. Right now, I mean, why are people paying $200 over the spot price for a gold eagle? Because there's hardly any inventory around. That is Tim Marshner's take on playing the gold to silver ratio with physical precious metals. For me, well, I like to buy my silver and gold for specific purposes. I like to buy my silver for barter potential, speculative upside, and as a wealth preservation asset. Those are the key reasons why I do it. And I really don't trade between the two. I know some of you do. But I want to make sure that I don't lose anything in the transaction and that I have the gold when I need it. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. Don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, ring that bell. As always, I hope your day is A-OK. -okay.